Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy and on this channel I'm exploring various aspects of geoscience, petrophysics and Python. So today we're going to generate different types of fills on our plot. We're going to fill from the left hand side of the plot towards our line and then from the line towards the other side of the plot. We are then going to fill to a fixed value on either side of the line and then we're going to see how to apply a variable fill using the values of the curve. Using these fills not only makes the plots look good, but it also enhances visualization, especially when we're dealing with petrophysical and well log data. We can see where extreme values are, and also where our reservoir and non-reservoir intervals are. So let us hop over to our Jupyter Notebook and see it in action. Here we are within our Jupyter Notebook. All of the code I'm going to show you can be found on my GitHub page at the link down in the description below this video. First, we start by importing our libraries that we need to use. These are pandas, pyplot from matplotlib, numpy, and lasio for loading our last file or our data. We can then load in our last file using lasio.read and passing in the location of the file which is located in the data subdirectory. To make things easier, we can convert the data to a pandas data frame and then quickly call upon df.head to view the contents at the top of the data frame. The data that we have are a series of well log measurements that have been acquired from a borehole within the evolved field of the Norwegian North Sea. I am going to do a little bit of renaming and editing of the data frame so that we have depth as a column rather than the index. And when we run the cell we can see that there are very minor changes. We can see that we've now got depth as a column rather than the index. So now we can create a very simple log plot or a line plot using the pyplot module of the matplotlib library. First, we need to define our figure and the figure size. And we can do that by referencing plt.figure and then passing in a figure size argument. We can then define our plot by calling upon plt.plot and passing in our gr column from the data frame by calling upon df and then passing in the column name. We then need to do the same with depth. And then we will set the color using the C argument and we will set this to black. When we run this cell we can see that there are a few things we need to change with our plot. First we need to reduce the line width and we can do this by passing in a new keyword argument called LW. And we can set the value of that to 0.5 and this reduces the thickness of the line. Next, we need to change the way our y-axis and x-axis is scaled. And we can do this by using plt.xlim and plt.ylim. So for the x-limits, we will pass in 0 to 150. And for our y-limit, we will pass in our depth range. And we will do this in reverse, as we want to go from the shallowest depth to the deepest depth. And there we have a much better looking plot. We're now looking over a 400 meter interval rather than the full well. So now we have a very basic vertical line plot with depth on the y axis and our gamma ray or gr column on the x axis. Now we will move on to adding our first plot fill, which can be done using the matplotlib function fill between x. And we can do this by typing plt.fill underscore between x. And then we need to pass in a number of variables. So first off, we need to pass in the y axis, which will be our depth. Then we need to pass in the left hand side value, which in this case will be zero, followed by the value of the line that we're wanting to shade or fill to. And we can also specify a color by using the face color keyword. When we run the cell, we have our first plot fill going from the left hand edge of the plot to the line. However, we can take it further and fill from the line to the right hand side of the plot. So to fill to the right hand side, we can duplicate the line that we put in above, plt fill underscore between x. And what we need to do is change the order of these values here. So first, we need to have df gr. And then after that, we need to specify the value that we are going to shade to or fill to. In this, in this case, we will set this to 150. And we need to change the color so that we can see a difference between the two plot fills. In this case, I will set this to yellow. Our plot now looks much better 
It may just look like we're adding color for the sake of adding color, but when we analyze this well log, we can clearly work out where our shellier intervals are by the larger percentage of green on the plot, and also where our cleaner intervals are by the larger percentage of yellow. So the next plot we're going to look at is how to fill to a fixed value. And we can make very minor changes to our code by changing the value that we're filling to, which we will set to 50, and we will set it so that it fills from the line to that fixed value. And we can do this without adding another line onto our plot. We also need to add in a where argument. And this means that it will only apply the fill based on a certain condition. First, we need to specify the fill to the left. And then we need to specify the fill to the right. And we can duplicate the same piece of code here, but we need to change the less than or equals to to a greater than or equals to. We also need to change our colors around so that we have yellow going towards the left and green going towards the right. So when we run the cell, we can now see a much clearer picture. We have a fixed baseline, which we've set to 50, and the plot will shade from the data or the line to that fixed value. So now we can see where we have cleaner intervals on our plot and also where we have our shallier intervals based on that cutoff. So at the moment, we only have two colors on the plot. If we want to apply a variable fill based on the actual value of the line and picking a color from a color map, we first need to do some setup. The first step is to define the left and the right values for our color scale. We then need to calculate the absolute difference between them. In our case, it will be the difference between 150 and zero, which in the end will be 150. However, this value can change depending on the values that you put in here, and it would be easier just to leave this line in to calculate that automatically when these values are changed. We can then call upon the color map by assigning a variable called cmap to plt.get underscore cmap. And we can pass in one of the matplotlib color maps that are available on their help documentation. And we can see here that they have miscellaneous color maps, qualitative color maps, cyclic, diverging, and sequential color maps, all listed here on their help document. So for this example, we'll use a color map called hot. And we pass that in as a text string. And one quick tip here is if you want to reverse the color map, which we do in this case, we can append an underscore followed by R. Finally, we need to create a color index, which can be done by using the numpy function arrange. And this function allows us to create an array of values between a start and stop value over a given step. We can then pass in our left and right value variables. And then we pass in our span and also divide it by 100. And this controls how fine we want the spacing to be between the values within our color index. If we divide by a higher number, we can then have a much finer control on the color that we are plotting from the color map. So we can quickly view these variables that we've created here. If we type in the variable cmap, we can view the color map that we're going to use. Also, if we want to view the color index, we can type that one in and see what the values are. And we can see that we've got values between zero and 150, and we will have 100 of these values within our color index. So in our next plot cell, we want to loop through each of the color indices that we have defined up here. And then we check the value in the curve and apply the color to the plot. So here we're getting the color index or the color value from our cmap. What I'll do here to illustrate what we're doing is we'll put in a print statement and we'll use an f string. When we print out the index, the index value in the color, what we have is we have the, have the index from our color index that we've defined up above. And then we have our index value that we're getting from the line above the previous line here, where we're taking the index that we are at and subtracting the left value and dividing by the span. And this allows us to go into the color map and get specific color from it. And on the right, we have the colors that we're getting back with our red, green, blue values, and also the alpha channel. So if I comment that line out, we can then go back and use our plt.fill between x.
And then when we run this cell, we can then see that we have a variable fill within the plot. We can see that our lower values are shaded in a much lighter yellow color compared to our higher extreme values, which are more orange towards black. Some interpreters prefer to have this fill going the opposite way and filling from the curve or the line to the right hand side of the plot. And all we need to do is change this left value here to the right value. And once we run this cell, we have the fill going from the line or the curve to the right hand side of our plot. And this sometimes helps when identifying our cleaner intervals, which we have highlighted in yellow, compared to our shaler intervals, which are highlighted in orange. And there we have it, we've seen how to apply different types of fills to our plot based on the values of the curve or to a fixed line or even to the edge of the actual plot. You may have noticed that I demonstrated some of the coding as I went along. Let me know down in the comments below if you prefer that style. If this video has been useful to you, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded to this channel. If you're interested in seeing how to work with cross plots or scatter plots using matplotlib, then perhaps this video up here may be of interest to you. Otherwise, if you're interested in exploring and understanding last files a bit more, then this video down here may be of interest to you. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.